Coming up this week on the show... Reese is back on the road catching us up with a true space cadet. A local craftsman shares his passion for a fragile form of art. And we get revved up for a rather unique I Am Fort Mill High School. It's Friday, October 12th, and the buzz starts right now. We came here for the buzz, and we got to know how all of this works. But there's so much more that makes this our show. Our tweets, our stories, and our boss. I am Mr. Scroggs, your new principal. Join forces to wish us. Happy Friday, Fort Mill. And we followed Rob Jones on his runs and realized the people on our screens are human too. We found others just like us, but who are a little more talented. And just like that, we're a Fort Mill family. But then things got crazy. We had to deal with critical comments, defending journalism, and unfortunate weather delays. That's going to change. From now on, The Buzz will do more to keep you updated and deliver an award-winning show so we can all get back to what made us good in the first place. Storytelling. Because when this class does what it was made for, then we all get that Friday feeling. Happy Friday, Fort Mill. I'm Ethan. And I'm Courtney. And while we didn't quite make it on the air for you guys last week, all thanks to Hurricane Michael, we're all dried out and happy to be back with another great show for you guys. And we're coming to you right from Main Street in Baxter, where there could be a little bit of an issue next year with the opening of the brand new Catawba Ridge High School. For as long as I can remember, these streets have been going blue and yellow. But at the new school attendance lines meeting on Monday, one of the maps had this neighborhood going green and gold. With roughly 6% of growth annually, it's no surprise that the city of Fort Mill has the fastest growing school district per capita in the state. This exponential development is requiring the establishment of the brand new high school, Catawba Ridge. Upcoming freshmen, sophomores, and juniors, rising juniors, will all attend the new school if they are zoned for it. They'll have the opportunity to go in and be a part of the school as it first opens and build a legacy that would be passed down to the students who come years after them. This process of redirection is complicated, but is assured to account for a wide variety of factors. We look at, first off, geography. We try to find the easiest paths and where the school is going to be at to get students to and from there. Um, we also look at the breakdown of students and try to help our seniors out and not force them to make a change in their last year. Although rising seniors do get this perk, many underclassmen are afraid of the rezoning repercussions. If I have to move to a different school, I would be a little upset because some of my friends would stay at Fort Mill and some would go to Catawba Ridge. I'm here at Nation Ford High School, or right behind me the new school lines will be announced in just a few short minutes. Now this decision is crucial and could affect many students and families alike. This communal meeting incorporated opinions from all areas of town by explaining three different options and asking for feedback in return. We do want to hear your feedback. We put three options together on purpose. They have pros and cons that are different. We're doing the best we can. We really do want to hear from you so that we come up with the best possible solution. And with that, um, you may go find your streets on the map out back. Residents are encouraged to review the choices and weigh in using the online survey located on the district website. A recommendation will be made to the school board by October 25th, and the new attendance areas are expected to be announced by November 6th. I'm Grayson, reporting for The Buzz. Now, no matter where the lines are drawn next year, one thing I'm sure we can all agree on is that we'll be adding another great school to our district. But make sure your voice is heard, because we'll be voting on the new school attendance lines on November 6th. Now, as we head further into fall, we're starting to wrap up some of our sports and celebrate the successful seasons of our Jacket athletes. Cameron is back at the desk this week to finish up fall athletics and get us ready for winter sports. What is up, Fort Mill fans? I hope you didn't miss me too much last week while Aubrey had her rookie debut on the desk, but with fall sports soon coming to a close, we only have a few more matchups to cover before the winter season begins. So it's time for the Buzz Sports. Cheer flipped the competition out of town on Wednesday night as they landed first place in the region championship. Tennis unfortunately met the end of their season on Wednesday night as they traveled to Spring Valley for the first round of the playoffs, sadly falling to the Vikings 1-5. Volleyball ventured to Spring Valley on Thursday night, battling hard but coming up short and ending their season with an overall record of 13-9. 
Football ended their season against Clover on senior night yesterday, coming up short 41-28. Senior Ben Kellum led the Jacket receivers, catching four passes for 101 yards and two touchdowns. And Cam Saunders also added a touchdown of his own for his seventh score of the season. D'Angelo Coit led the defense with an 88-yard fumble recovery for a touchdown. We're proud of all our seniors for four great years of Jacket football. That's all the action we have for you guys this week. For more content, make sure to follow at the buzz underscore sports for all things Jacket Athletics. Back to you, Ethan and Courtney. Thanks, Cameron. We're always impressed with how well you guys managed to keep up with all the action, and we know it's even harder with all the weather cancellations and rescheduling. But hey, guys, I hope everybody's excited because we only have 14 more days until basketball season. And then it's back to the busy schedules of several games a week, lots of late nights, and tons of travel. Now, one person who will never turn down a trek across the state is Reese, but the trip he went on this week was just a little bit out there. Yeah, he went to South Carolina's official UFO Welcome Center. And yes, it's a thing, and yes, it's as weird as it sounds, but this one ought to be good. Reese, what you got? Thanks, guys. This week, I'm heading to a particularly special spot. While it's only about two hours away, some might say it's actually out of this world. Let's go. Uh -oh. Okay, well, I guess I don't need to drive. Thanks to one of my alien friends, I've traveled all the way down to the backwoods town of Bowman, South Carolina. While it might not be the pristine place of Fort Mill, this area does have one fascinating feature right behind me that makes it a little bit stranger. This is the UFO Welcome Center. Jody Pendarvis, known as the Alien Ambassador due to his self-proclaimed ability to speak with aliens, has been building this colossal construction for almost 20 years. However, his obsession with outer space has yet to cease. Oh, this is a place where the aliens, that's from outer space, could land, chit chat with me for seven minutes and take off again. Now it might look like it's falling down, but it's not, okay? It, it's just that I kind of rebuilt it a little bit. It's not perfect, so, you know, take off would be perfect, but not yet, but come on around. Now our first thoughts as we walked inside were that it would be a piece of junk, but with the switch of a light, we were completely correct. Most people find that there are many problems with the UFO, but Jody only thinks there's one thing missing. The engine, uh, I can't tell you, it's top, kind of top secret. But actually, I'm, I was waiting for the ship to land, and I go in and get their engine and put it right here. Okay. And then raise my ship up. See, there's floats. Internal embustion kind of junk. Yeah, so whenever it goes, up and away. I know he might sound crazy. Yep, this is my backup power. But whether you're a skeptic or a believer, Jody allows beings of all kinds to come inside and take a look. Oh, that, that book's filled with people from out of space. <laughs> At least they think they were. But yeah, um, uh, tourists from all over want to stop in and see it. And, I tell them, as long as they think they're from outer space, go ahead and come on in. Yeah. Well, that was honestly one of the um, weirdest places I've ever been. But it was definitely worth the drive. If you have any other places for me to go, let me know at my Twitter, at the buzz underscore Reese H. Reporting for the buzz, I'm Reese. Now, how am I gonna get home? 
just leave it to the state of South Carolina to give you some pretty serious characters. But I think Reese managed to capture that one perfectly. One of the things I love most about this show is being able to go out and meet people that I otherwise wouldn't have. And some are pretty out there, but others touch your heart in a way that you would never imagine. Exactly. So Cassidy pitched this story a few weeks ago about an artist who is opening up a new shop, and she thought she'd just go cover a regular ribbon cutting and said it would be no big deal. But it turned out to be much more than that. I think it's safe to say that this story really blew her away. What started out as a simple family vacation more than two decades ago has literally blown into a lifelong passion for an ancient Roman art form. I first saw glass um, when I was about 13 or 14 years old. I was on a vacation in Bermuda. I was just fascinated with that process and watching these men take this molten material out of this tank and just being able to create it into anything they wanted. After pestering his family to find a place to blow glass professionally, Jake's mom realized creating beautiful works of art was something he wanted to do for the rest of his life. And then he came home maybe a couple months later and he said, I think I want to do this for a living. And we were like, right, next year you'll want to be an accountant. But he never looked back. This persistence towards his dream of perfecting the art of glassblowing led to creating a business, including a hot shop studio where he can share his passion with others. With the furnace that's kept at over 2,000 degrees, Jake takes the centuries-old art form of turning hot liquid into beautiful bowls, vases, and ornaments. It's almost like a dance, is what I've been told it's like. Like, when you see the process, it looks like a choreographed dance. But like the molten glass he meticulously manipulates, Jake knows firsthand what it's like to take something that at first looks like it could be ruined, and watch it transform into something unique and beautiful. Might have to just completely ruin the piece and then just start over and like start from the beginning. That's how it was with cancer. It was like my childhood was taken away. Sorry. Diagnosed with rhabdomyosarcoma at just five years old, Jake spent several years in the hospital, suffering through rounds of radiation and chemotherapy. But his mom says going through that experience actually made him stronger. He does not give up. And I think some of that might be because of what he's been through as a child. The doctors would come in and say, okay, we're gonna do radiation and chemotherapy today. And he was just like, okay, let's just do it and get on with it. And he's kind of like that about this. When there are stumbling blocks, he tries to turn those into stepping stones. Realizing from an early age the fragility of glass and the delicacy of how the artist must approach the medium to turn it into something useful, Jake says he draws parallels with the fragility of life, but when put to an extreme test can be forged into something unforgettable. I've looked at life like that, glass like that. It's like, just enjoy every minute, you know? There's times where it's frustrating, just like in life, you know? but you try and make the best of it and you move forward and you're like, I can do this better. I can approach this situation differently. I can change this outcome if I want to. If I put my mind to it, I can make that happen. I'm Cassidy, reporting for The Buzz. That's exactly what I was talking about earlier. It's the stories like that that make all of our late nights and early mornings working on this show so worth it. And I love the parallel Jake made about how his life was fragile like glass. Whenever he was put to the test, he was able to produce something truly remarkable. It just goes to show that the experiences you have in your childhood can easily turn into lifelong endeavors. And that's why it's so important to experiment with different clubs throughout high school, because you never know. You just might pick up a passion that could turn into a career. And I know he's not on the show enough, but Isaac is back to go clubbing again this week, and he's pulling out all the stops. And on that note, I guess since I'm not needed anymore, I just might head on over to Starbucks and pick us up some pretty basic pumpkin spice lattes. Okay, uh, take it away, Isaac. Wow, anchoring was more fun than I thought, but you don't usually see me clubbing like this. Um, I'm not home yet, and what am I wearing? No, that's better. Hey everyone, it's been a minute since I've been clubbing last, so uh, let's just jump right into it.
Well, that's new. Looks like we're finding clubs on our own this week, but I think I know a few. Wow, that never gets old. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take a judicial journey through one of Fort Mill's most meticulous clubs. Mock trial. Detected in the hub of R200, Mock Trial brings the courthouse to the schoolhouse. Mock Trial is a bit of acting, a bit of law, and a bit of thinking on your feet. So you have to make all your statements, you have to choose a side, and you have to act it out as well. How long have you been a police officer? 28 years now. I start These aspiring attorneys aren't alone. Fort Mill alumni return as professional lawyers to provide assistance for upcoming competitions. Yes, I graduated in 2003, was a member of the mock trial team for four years then. And when I got my law degree and came back to the area, I decided I wanted to get back involved with the program. We are so grateful for them taking their time out of their day because they work a full work day and then they come and they help us. If you're thinking about it, give it a shot because I can almost guarantee that if you come in here, you will love it. Thank you, Yana. No further questions. Amidst the show of cases and rulings, there lies yet another club for your linguistic fix to flourish. Situated in C201, debate team readies its members for rebuttal. And it's modeled after the Abraham Lincoln and Stephen Douglas debates. You flip the coin, and the winner of the coin toss gets to speak first or second. Uh, going second gives you a much stronger strategic start. You definitely get to get the last word in, and that really sticks with judges. How individuals can express their moral beliefs. This club is newly sponsored, but this doesn't discourage its founders from diving deep into deliberation. The two, by definition, are morally exclusive. The more politically attuned you are, the better you are for debate. You definitely get more passionate about the subject and that makes researching a lot easier. I'm a libertarian and it means I believe that gay married couples should be able to defend their marijuana plants with guns. By now you've probably noticed some striking similarities between debate club and mock trial. So what are the differences between the two clubs and which should you join? Both clubs demand argumentative assets and a taste for theatrics. However, while Debate Club embraces a motion to aid in a real-life argument, Mock Trial pushes the act further, embracing kids from both the legal field and the performing arts. So, if you crave contention, come on over to Debate Club. However, if you just can't get enough of the courthouse, move on over to Mock Trial. <laughs> or sign up for both. Nothing's stopping you. Well, that was fun. We should do this again sometime. But for now, Whip back on over to Baxter to finish up the rest of the show. Be sure to check out my socials to let me know about your next club meeting. Till next time, I'm Isaac, reporting for The Buzz. Sorry, I had to make another stop on the way there. Did I miss anything? Why do I feel like you guys were up to something? I don't know. Let's just switch gears for a bit and talk about one of our Fort Mill family members. Switching gears. I see what you did there. So right up the road is the very popular Charlotte Motor Speedway, and it's the home to the Coca-Cola 600 and all things NASCAR. But as prominent as the sport is in the Carolinas, it's not usually something you pick up as a teen. But when it's in your blood, that's a different story. This week's I Am Fort Mill High School highlights a young racer whose family has been driving for decades. Dirt truck racing has been my life ever since I was a kid. I grew up watching my dad race, and I knew I wanted to follow in his footsteps. In order to be competitive in this sport, you have to work daily and do whatever it takes to get the car running perfect. Even if that means staying up till 2 a.m. working or canceling weekend plans with your friends because you can't miss a week of racing. I love the feeling of competition and working to improve my driving skills and my car every week. The speed and adrenaline rush I feel while racing is like nothing else. I've made most of my closest friends at the racetrack and met people I now call family. And I think that's what makes it all worth it. 
Racing is my passion and I plan on continuing to race for as long as I can. My name is Christian and I am Fort High School. It's awesome how Christian gets to use his passion to compete on such a big stage. I also love how we get to showcase all of our unique Fort Mill family members. That's right, and if you have an interesting hobby or talent that you'd like us to highlight on our I Am Fort Mill High School series, be sure to reach out to us on Twitter because you could be our next big story. And make sure you stay connected with us on Instagram and YouTube as well. Zach and Hunter will be back next week with another spooktacular show for you guys. And until next time, I'm Courtney. And I'm Ethan. Have, have a, a great, great weekend, weekend Fort Mill. Mill.